chapter 23 and it's interesting that all of the major feasts that exist in your Bible is in Leviticus chapter 23 all of them, again the number 23 but in verse 23 of chapter 23 of the book of Leviticus the Lord spake unto Moses saying speak unto the children of Israel and say saying in the seventh month everybody say seventh month in the first day of the month shall ye have a Sabbath a memorial of the blowing of the trumpet which is really shofar a holy convocation ye shall do no civil work therein but ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord verse 26 and the Lord spake unto Moses saying also on the tenth day of the seventh month so the very same month but now ten days later on the tenth day of the seventh month there shall be a day of atonement everybody say atonement it shall be a holy convocation unto you and ye shall afflict your souls and offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord and ye shall do no work in that day for it is a day of atonement to make atonement for you before the Lord your God and it shall be unto you a Sabbath of rest so no matter what day it falls upon you treat it like a Sabbath and ye shall afflict your souls in the ninth day of the month at evening from evening unto evening shall ye celebrate your Sabbath. You're having three hours tomorrow. The scripture says from evening to evening. Anyway. <laughs> when they're celebrating, they will run 24 hours or so. And of course, you know why. They'll have taken uh, sometimes days and weeks just to be able to reach their destination. So you can't just jump in your vehicle and go back. So when they come, they come to celebrate. In Leviticus 25... Verse 8 it says, And thou shalt number seven Sabbath of years unto thee, seven times seven years, and the space of the seven Sabbath of years shall be unto you, unto thee forty and nine years. So seven by seven is forty-nine. Then shalt thou cause the trumpet of the Jubilee to be sounded on the tenth day of the seventh month. Everybody say tenth day of the seventh month. That's the same as the atonement day. Because the atonement is the tenth day of the seventh month. In the day of atonement shall he make the trumpet sound throughout all your land. He shall hallow the fiftieth year and proclaim liberty throughout all the land unto all the inhabitants thereof. It shall be a jubilee unto you and ye shall return every man unto his possession and ye shall return every man unto his family. Now watch this. Every year, in the seventh month, from the first day of the month, they will celebrate what is called the Feast of Trumpets. The Feast of Trumpets will normally run two days, of which there is a number of blowing of the shofar, including something called what is called the last sound of the trumpet, where they will have over 100 trumpets being blown. They'll blow it in successions of 33 songs so they'll blow one set of 33 songs a second set of 33 songs a third set of 33 songs so they are 99 and then with the, the the last one they will take the deepest breath and blow the longest called the hundred sound this the song number 100 which is called the last trump or the song of the trumpet that last sound does be so long and so loud it is believed even the dead could get up but it's always done within the feast of the trumpets however when you have it run for 49 years on the 50th year which is a jubilee if you're in the land you will you, you, your 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 day of the last trumpet no longer happens inside the feast trumpet a feast of trumpets but you now bring it on the day of atonement in other words, then 10 days later, or you will celebrate not only from evening to evening, you will celebrate for 10 days, and on the day of atonement, in a jubilee year, you now have the celebration of the last trumpet. You all following me? Happens only once every 50 years. So only in a jubilee, the year of the trumpet, the sound of the day of atonement, it happens, you see, in a normal feast of trumpet year, you will blow it in the city. 
But in the Jubilee year, the sound of the last trumpet happens throughout the land. Throughout the land. Once every 50 years. Seven reasons why the Day of Atonement is valuable in the year 2023. One. 50 years from 1923, the day that he effected the document, to 1973 was the Six-Day War when the Jews captured Jerusalem back. They were able um, to capture that, and you had what was called the, the Arab-Israeli War. It actually fell on a jubilee year. From 1973, the next jubilee is going to fall 50 years in the future, which brings you to the year 20. 23. That's why this year, the Day of Atonement, today, in the land of Israel and all over wherever the Jews are, they will not only blow the sound of the trumpet, but they will blow it throughout the land. Are you there with me? In which the last trumpet will fall on the Day of Atonement in the year 2023, in the same time that they're having a peace accord being discussed with Israel and Saudi Arabia, in the same time when there are disasters and earthquakes and different things happening, in the same block of time when there is what is called a Revelation 12 sign happening in the heavens, in the same time when you're having a Russia and all type of things converging in the earth, you now have a 2023 Jubilee year on the day of atonement where the face of the last trumpet fall and it should be blown throughout the land are you there with me very appropriate right timing you must understand the times that we are living in understand I know this chart will have a lot of stuff on it. I, I just want for you to see um, one thing really, and that's this. From Adam to Abraham, if you track the genealogies or the begats, a lot of time people, you give them Bible to read, they don't read the begats. Lots of big names inside of there, and if you try to read the begat, you don't get what's inside the begat. And if you read the begat, you forgot what's inside the begat, so you don't read the begat, so you don't get what's inside the begat at all. So I'm here to help you get what's inside the begat. God like numbers, so he tracks the fathers and the son. If you go from Adam and you go all the way to when Abraham is born, it is exactly 1948 years. Exactly. In other words, then, Abraham is born in 1948 BC. Jesus is the last Adam. And if I travel from Jesus and I go exactly 1948 years, the nation of Israel is reborn in 1948. You all following me? 1948. As a matter of fact, I recently discovered in Revelation chapter 3, Jesus says that one of the things the Laodicea church needs is that they need to have, or their faith must be tested so that it will be what is known as fine gold. Fine gold. When I, when I chatted with those that work with gold in the jewelry store, they says that the, the temperature that is needed in order for gold to be refined, to come to fine gold, is exactly 1,948 degrees. That's why I read the passage before. God will send the teachers. And although you're getting the bread of affliction, uh, sorry, the bread of ad ad adversity and the water of affliction, you will have teachers that will guide you through it as to what's going on. Look at the second thing, why it is important. Called out at 75. Genesis 12 verse 4. So Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken unto him. And Lot went with him. And Abraham was 75 years old when he departed out of, Ab um, of, 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 of Haran. 
Now, Abraham is called the Hebrew. Abraham is the father of the Jewish nation in reality. And he is called out. He's called to leave home. He's called to depart. He's called to come out at age 75. 2023 minus 1948 is 75 years. Is then, are we smack in the time where we are also going to be the one that might be called out to leave? Are you there with me? You see, if it, if it was one duck lining up to cross the road, but when I have a whole heap of them lining up, it's a different game ball that is taking place for us to understand the fullness of what's going on. 75 years. That's why Israel celebrated this year their diamond anniversary as a nation. Watch this. Abraham waited for 25 years for the coming of his son Isaac. Modern Israel had a 25 years time frame between when they was birthed in 1948 to what is known as the Young Kiplo War in which Israel gained back territory in 1973. That 1973 victory occurred on a jubilee year, providing you are checking from the time that they entered the land, which is 19, which is 1948. 1948 to 1973 is that 25 years. It should be 25, not 50. 25 years. So you have a 25 years that brings you to a jubilee year. In the jubilee year of 1973 there was a war they were surrounded by their enemies and god gave them a victory now we in our next jubilee year 50 years after they are surrounded by all type of enemies would they also see a great victory and i believe that they will that great victory that they would have seen is number five from 1973, which was a year when Israel was surrounded by enemies. It was a year of victory. Everybody say a year of victory. From, from 1973 to 2023, the jubilee year of victory for Israel, they were surrounded by many nations. And once again, we are seeing that they are surrounded by many nations. And can we be at the point in time where we will see what is called the Psalm 83 war? And in the Psalm 83 war, the neighbors around decided, let us make a, a, a confederation together. And let us come up against Israel that their name will be no more. It is once again happening on every border of Israel. There are missiles pointing at them right now. But the covenant of Israel is connected also to the timing and the jubilee that they are in. Number six. The sounding of the great and last trumpet is always done on the last day of the Feast of Trumpets. I said that already. However, only in the Jubilee year, in the sound of the last and great shofar blowing happens on the Day of Atonement. And the Day of Atonement happens to be today is the holiest day in the Jewish year. The holiest day in the Jewish year. The Feast of Trumpets and the Day of Atonement all comes together as one. When you have a Jubilee year, which is a year of victory, even though you are surrounded by enemies, you are guaranteed a victory. Now, let me give you something bigger to clap about. I am baffled, Apostle, that God will honor the old covenant. Their covenant is made with blood of bulls and goats, written on a stone that is full of rituals, and them getting victory on that. We have a better covenant with a better blood written now in our hearts and if they with an old covenant can get physical literal protection and victory in a jubilee year it means therefore you and i that have a better covenant on better blood with better promises 
ना छुबड़ी है ये खा रबा शिंदे ये नबे की ओर रुबो I know that you're facing some battles and you're being fed with the bread of affliction and and the water of adversaries and you're faced with different things but understand understand in where that you are in and the timing and the season and the relevance that is here if God can protect on our own covenant them have blindness and they still getting protected how much more we on a better covenant number 7 this recent united nations summit started monday gone highlighted the repeated statement of peace and safety and peace and security we have been witnessing now this treaty to saudi with saudi arabia Saudi Arabia is significant. They have a couple of biblical history. One, Mount Sinai is there. Two, Paul had an experience with God on the mountain. And three, we are seeing that they are getting ready for this peace treaty. In Scripture, they are referred to as Sheba and Dedan, which are the merchants of of um, Tarshish. They are the young lions that is going to come around the nation of Israel, and that is what we are seeing happening, taking place now. For a long time, I was asking myself. I always put the focus on the peace side, and never really put the focus on the safety side. But even in our own country, over the last fifteen years, safety has become a big thing, especially those of you all that work in different industries. The safety first. They will shut down production because of safety. All type of uniform you have to wear in the name of safety. One set of thing is all being done. There are some places you go for work. They ask you if you have. Um, if you can drive, and then they ask you, "Do you have defensive driving?" It is a safety requirement. Safety. There is a highlight of safety. Scripture says, "When they shall say peace and safety, that is how we know that something suddenly is going to come." Now, listen to me carefully. Listen to me carefully. The church started. With something suddenly, on the day of Pentecost, the church will end with something suddenly. In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, something suddenly. This UN summit, and in case you just want to know what scripture I'm quoting there, for they shall say peace and safety. Then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail with a woman with child, and they shall not escape. Daniel nine and verse twenty four says that when the Antichrist come to power, and I want to show you one word here, he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. When the Antichrist comes to power, he doesn't make the covenant; he only confirms it. That means we have to live in a time where we will see they are putting covenants together or treaties together. Because when he comes on the stage, he's not going to create no treaty. He will simply confirm the treaty. Are you there with me? So if we are seeing peace treaties being assembled, designed right now, we need to understand how close it is. Are you there with me? Now I wanna, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna frighten you a little bit, just a little bit. The chauffeur got melted back down. If you check out the documents, and you can go on the World Economic Forum. And by the way, I have spoken with Apostle. I'm going to be back here in a few weeks to do three nights. But I don't want to do it for Doxa only. Normally, when we're coming in the area, we try to capture the whole area. I want to hit the whole east-west corridor, and we're going to have three nights here. I'm going to be doing one night heavy, deep, intense teaching on the hope and the rapture. The second night, I want to prepare for those who will be left behind what to do, and I'm going to map out that entire seven years for you to see and the horror you're going to face. My mother-in-law is on one of the sessions. She said that thing, that thing, scary. I want to scare the hell out. And I want to scare the heaven in. Yeah. But 
I want to close our session with a Holy Ghost impartation service. The last night, I'm going to bring about three or four ministers with me. We're going to do a summit the last night. And we are going to do, they're going to all teach a 10 minutes window and we'll open up a panel for discussion. You all can ask questions and so on like that. Write your question. Bombard them. Bombard the office with questions. And we want to deal with some things on that last night. So there'll be no major laying on of hands on that last night. But I need to get you aware. But one of the things I want to highlight, which I want to say now, this treaty they want to put in place is called a 2030 agenda. It's a seven-year plan. It is the first time in human history we are seeing the politics and the governments and the economics of the world doing something that is coming close to biblical record. I am not saying it is the seven-year treaty of Daniel. What I am saying, it is coming close to the already documented record. You all following me? But here what they have in this. One, the biggest thing that they have, or the first thing they have in the document, is that by the year 2030, nobody must eat meat. The Bible says in the last days, they'll say, abstinence from meat. Number two, Nobody will be able to leave their home more than 15 minutes of walking. Everybody will have one currency. It's a digital currency. It's called the world coin. Right now, there are at least 120 nations on board. There's an orb in the bank. You go and you scan your eye in, and that's how you get it. Every day they release how much money you have to spend on that day. That's how it's going to work. Thank you. Three times a year, they will send three suits of clothes for you. Once every three years, you'll be allowed to fly on an airplane. But you know it's the most dangerous part? They want to reduce human population to under one billion. In their document, you could go on their website and find it. They want to remove, in the first instance, four billion useless eaters. Here you have a government policy that is in alignment or parallel with what's happening in the tribulation. That's what we want to do in a few weeks' time. 2030 agenda. So what have we seen before us? Do you know <laughs> the pandemic that started, that happened in March of 2020. If you go from March of 2020 to September 2023, it's exactly three and a half years. Exactly three and a half years. This month we are seeing the Feast of Trumpets, as I mentioned, Rosh Hashanah, the beginning of the new year. There is something that is happening uh, these few days called the Revelation 12 sign happened this past week, but it's only in the year 2023. They have, they have over the years, named comets. They give comets name, thousands of comets name. And there's a comet that is passing through the womb of the woman in the heavens, and the name of the comet is called the child. They took the software and they track it a thousand years in the future, a thousand years back. The only time it passes through the womb of a woman is September 2023. It's called the Revelation 12 sign. Yesterday was called the day of equal parts. There, is a, there was a whole set of television programs about September 23rd. The day of equal parts is recorded in John chapter 11. Jesus said that there are not 12 hours in a day. It's the day that he raised Lazarus from the dead. It is the only day in the year where you have exactly 12 hours daylight and 12 hours night. Every other day is either a little more daylight or a little more night. It's the only day that is balanced or perfect. Of course, we have the U.S. summit going on. And we have entered a new year in the Jewish calendar. And that new year in the Jewish calendar is 5784. Hear what it means. The year of the open door. <laughs> it's actually called the home going. Year of the open door. Originally, they were just supposed to be discussing this treaty until... Earlier this week, they now decide they're going to have a peace treaty with Israel. And that is what caused our air to go up. Peace treaty with Israel. 
And of course, the reason why we're here today is the Day of Atonement celebrating today, and that's why you're having a celebration tomorrow as well. We are told to watch. Everybody say watch. watch. Mark 13, 33. Listen to it. Take ye heed, watch and pray, for ye know not what the time is. For the Son of Man is a man taking a far journey, who left his house and gave authority to his servants and every man his work, and commanded the porter to watch. Now, we didn't command the porter to work. He gave you work. You're supposed to be working, but while you're working, you're supposed to be watching. You have a lot of people on that day. They will come and tell Jesus, did I not do this in your name? And that thing. He said, I don't know you because you were working, but you wasn't watching. He didn't command them to work. He commanded them to watch. That's a word from the word. Verse 35. Watch ye therefore, for ye do not know when the master of the house had come at evening or at midnight or at the cock crowing or at morning. That's every six hours. He basically tell them that. Least come in suddenly. The church will end with something suddenly. Least come in suddenly. Find you sleeping. And to me, verse 37, you can't get better than that. What I say unto you, I say unto all. Watch. Watch. 